Hello, Professor Carefit returning again. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, more derived members of the animal clade. So we've talked a little bit about uh, basal uh, chordates, uh, basal vertebrates like the hagfish and the lampreys, and we've talked about sharks and rays, how they have um, cartilaginous skeletons, but they are vertebrates. Now the next clade we're going to talk about uh, and, and we mentioned nathostomes as a major clay. We are nathostomes as well because we would fall down here on this cladogram. We are nathostome. We are vertebrates. We are nathostomes. Uh, the next group we're going to talk about is the osteichthys, which are the bony fish, which also includes us because our, remember a clade is an ancestor and all of its descendants. And our ancestor was most definitely uh, in that clade and so on and so forth. So that's where we're working our way through. Um, we're not going to learn all of these big clade names like Mixini and, uh, you know, uh, Akinista and all the, we're not going to do that, but we are going to learn some of the common names that the ones that I talk about, um, in the, uh, in the lecture anyway. All right. So we've talked about cartilaginous fish. Now let's talk about the osteichthys. This is the clade of bony fish, and there are a couple groups within the clade of bony fish. Um, the first group is called the ray-finned fish. Ray-finned fish um, have little bones in their fins. Uh, think of like bass, bluegill, crappie, catfish. These are the you know examples of ray-finned fish. Um, this group evolved around 400 million years ago. So once again, during the Paleozoic, um, just to put that into perspective while we're thinking about it, let me let me go up to uh, to a um, geologic time. Oh, I guess I thought I had a time scale on here. I guess I don't. Um, so 400 million years ago, so kind of uh, early, uh, kind of early middle Paleozoic is when these things are showing up. They have a skeleton made of bone. Uh, they have a swim bladder, which allows them to be buoyant. So a swim bladder is like a bag filled with gas, and it allows them to float so they can just sort of hang out in the water and not sink and not come all the way to the surface. They can maintain buoyancy. And this swim bladder in some groups may have evolved into lungs, like in the lungfish. Um, one important thing to note is of the vertebrates, this is the group with the most species, the most species rich vertebrate group with over 30,000 species. So more species rich than the mammals, than the reptiles, uh, etc. The, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, ray finned fish are a very diverse group. And this is the group that most of us think of when we say fish, is the uh, ray finned fish, part of the Osteichthys clade. Here's just a diagram of of one of these fish showing you the different parts. There's that swim bladder I mentioned about uh, earlier. And they have a two-chambered heart, which we've mentioned already. Two-chambered heart, complete digestive tract like you would expect to see. Uh, here's the dorsal surface, ventral surface, anterior, and posterior surface. It's a very diver diverse group, like I said. Everything from tuna to seahorses to eels, all of these are ray-finned fish. Now, the lobe-finned fish are another group of osteichthians, and these are the groups that gave rise to uh, uh, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals, and, and so we uh, are related to these a little more closely. These are called lobe-finned fish because the bones in their fins are the same bones that we have in our hands. Um, they evolved a little bit later, than the uh, ray finned fish. So what I recommend you do is I don't I'm not going to make you memorize the years here, but take a geologic time scale. You can print one off the internet or use one uh, or you know use one from your book or whatever, and put the order that these things appear on that time scale. So you know the order that these appeared in, and in which time period. Uh, when I say time period, I mean the big time periods like uh, Paleozoic. Uh, Precambrian, Mesozoic, th uh, those time time frames. This group gave rise to tetrapods. Um, there's only a few living species today, though, uh, and uh, and uh, they include like coelacanth and lungfish. Uh, coelacanth are, are these really cool fish that we thought were extinct, and uh, at least uh, in the West, 
uh, in Europe and, and North America and things, we thought they were extinct, but uh, they found them. Uh, the fishermen were catching them and eating them and things off the coast of, think, of I think, Madagascar. And the scientists discovered that and realized they were not extinct. Um, so this group has bones in their fins, much like the bones of our hands. So they have a wrist, they have little phalanges, little fingers. All the bones we have in our hands are found in the fins of these fish. Whereas ray fin fish have much simpler fins with just these long skinny bones uh, and they don't have all those other wrist bones and things like we do. Now we've been talking about then this transition to life on land. We haven't got to land yet in any of the tetrapods. We've been or the, the any of the uh, um, uh, chordates. All the chordates we've looked at so far are aquatic, um, except for maybe some of the lobe fin fish can or, uh, can come out of the water for a little while. But um, remember that several different groups have evolved to life on land. And some of them have evolved to life on land a couple times, like uh, your book will talk about some crabs that, that evolved to life on land just like four million years ago. Um, meanwhile, other crabs evolved to life on land, you know, way before that. So it's, it's really interesting to, to read that. But what I like about this figure is it shows you who their aquatic relatives are, their nearest aquatic relative. And then it shows you the, the, the group that's... Uh, fully terrestrial and what different adaptations they've come up with and whether those are new traits that they evolved or whether they're traits they inherited. And have a look at this diagram. Um, green algae is the closest relative to plants. So green algae does not have roots, does not have lignin uh, and stems, so it doesn't have that strength, the, the strong cell walls, and it doesn't have tall stems. Um, it doesn't have a vascular system, so xylem and phloem is not present. And algae does not have cuticle, which is wa a waterproofing material, and algae does not have stomata. So plants had to evolve all of these things over time to evolve to life on land. They are like super well adapted to life on land. They've evolved almost all new traits after moving on to land. They still have a few basal traits like chlorophyll A and B and stuff like that. But all of these adaptations to life on land are, are new. They're derived in the land plants. Whereas crustaceans... Um, their support structure, their, their exoskeleton, was something their ancestors in the water had. Their, their internal transport system, the way they move materials around, their open circulatory systems and things like that, that's ancestral. Their muscles and nerves, they, they already had that. Uh, their protection against drying out, which is their exoskeleton, they already had that. The one thing they evolved when they came out of the water is they got rid of gills and, and came up with a new way of breathing, that trachea system. What Now, when we look at the chordates, uh, here's one of our nearest aquatic relatives from back in the day. Um, we already had a skeleton, but we changed the fins into limbs, so we added to it. Uh, we changed it a bit. Internal transport, we already had that. We had a two-chambered heart, maybe a three-chambered heart by this case, uh, and, and so we already had that. We already had muscles and nerves. Uh, we already had a uh, gas exchange with the air before we came out of the water. The one thing we did evolve new over time was scales that helped to keep us from drying out, and we evolved the amniotic egg. So you can see some of these new traits in, in red here that, we, that these different groups evolved in order to invade the land. And you can see that plants have a lot more derived traits than uh, even um, animals like ourselves have. So 365 million years ago, we have uh, the invasion of land by vertebrates. So this is an uh, animal that your book talks about. This is called Tiktaalik. This is a skeleton they found uh, in northern Canada. And here's a reconstruction of what it would have looked like. It's got lobe fins like a lobe fin fish, but it has nostrils. It breathes air. It has a head more like a crocodile. Uh, so it probably was somewhat amphibious or, or lived right at the edge of the water and the land. This is a really cool fossil. And um, they found it by predicting at what time frame this animal should have existed and what kind of rocks. And then they went to that location and looked and looked and looked and they actually found it. So they used the predictive nature of science to predict where a fossil like this should be. And they actually found it there, which is awesome. Um, so here is Tiktaalik. 
What I like about this diagram and something you might take note of is it has fish-like characters, so ancestral characters. It has scales like a fish, fins like a fish, gills and lungs like certain low-finned fish, like some of the lung fish. But it has tetrapod characters. Tetrapod means four legs, four feet. It has a neck that can turn like a tetrapod. It has ribs like a tetrapod. Um, the skeleton in the fin is more and more like a hand. It has a flat skull. It has eyes on top. Most fish don't have that. It has eyes on top like a tetrapod instead of on the side. So it has traits uh, of fish and traits like tetrapods. It's kind of a transitional species from fish to amphibian. And if we look at a cladogram here of different fossils uh, leading up to this group, here are the lungfish, here are different early amphibians, here's Tiktaalik, so here's some like lobefin fish, and here is Tiktaalik and some definite amphibians. This Tiktaalik is, is kind of a uh, sister to the rest of these amphibians. Uh, these down here actually, you know, down here we have the evolution of actual free fingers. Tiktaalik didn't have that yet. And this is leading up to modern amphibians and amnios. So Tiktaalik is a transitional form between the lobe-finned fish and the amphibians. And, and it's just a really interesting story. And you can see it shows up here during the Devonian era, uh, sort of early, middle, uh, Paleozoic. So we're going to pick up there and go into those tetrapods in the next lecture.